Now every year I come across students who find algebraic long division quite difficult. It's a spri surprising how many students find this difficult and what I'm going to show you today is a very simple method of doing this. Much more simple than the conventional method that's taught in schools. And what I'm going to show you is the grid method and this method is actually suggested by the project maths team so you need not worry that this method is won't be accepted in, a, in an exam it will be it's a good method and it's much much simpler than the method most people are, are taught right so the first thing we need to do is determine what the size of our grid is going to be and that depends on the highest power of x here in this in this expression here so the highest power of x is 3 that means we need to have three columns in our grid and because there's two terms in the divisor we need to have two rows and now we take the divisor here 3x plus 1 and we place that out to the left of the grid making sure that the 3x is opposite this row and the plus 1 is opposite this row the next thing we need to do is to take the 3x cubed, the very first term here, and put it into the very first cell of the grid on the far left hand side. Once we've done that, we, can, we should divide this term here into the first term. So you, the way you do that is you divide the number first. So 3 into 3 goes once, x into x cubed goes x squared times. So that will leave you with 1x squared here, or in other words, just x squared. And if you're not sure how we got the x squared, x cubed divided by x is the same as x by x by x divided by x. And as one of the x's will get, will get cancelled out, you're left with x by x, which is x squared. Or a simpler way of thinking of that is, when you divide powers, you subtract the indices. So this is x to the power of 3, this is x to the power of 1, so 3 minus 1 gives us 2. So the next thing we do is we multiply the top term here by the, the, the second term in the divisor. So I use this little guideline here just to help me uh, remember basically the shape of the problem, you know, the steps that I need to take in what order. I often find that giving a shape to a solution like this helps me remember how to answer the solution. Uh, rather than just looking at a bunch of numbers and letters, it actually has a specific shape that I, that I can remember uh, easily. Okay, so if we multiply the x squared by the plus 1, we're going to get x squared in this box here. Now, once we reach the bottom cell here, we have to start thinking, what can we add to this value here, or this term, to get the second term in the expression? So minus 2x squared. So you notice this is an x squared, and this is an x squared. So you're comparing these two, and you're, you're asking yourself, what do we add or subtract to this to get this? Well, seeing as that's minus 2x squared, we're going to have to do minus 3x squared to bring this down to minus 2x squared. And you put that answer in this uh, cell here. So the, the cell diagonal to this one. And at this stage now, we've ex effectively completed what I call a loop. So the next steps that we're going to take are simply a repeat of the first steps that we took. So if you remember, the first thing we did was divide the 3x into the 3x cubed. Now we divide the 3x into the minus 3x squared, which gives us x. 3 into 3 goes once, and then x into x squared goes x times. So we, because it's a plus into a minus, we get a minus x answer. So again, we're repeating the same steps. So... Uh, the second step is always to multiply what's here by what's down here. So we're going to make another guideline from, from this to this. Then we multiply minus x by plus 1 
to get minus x in this cell here. And at this point, we ask ourselves again, what do we need to add to minus x to get minus 19x? Or what do we need to subtract to get minus 19x? So as that's minus 1x, to get down to minus 19, we'd have to do minus 18x in this cell here. And this signifies the end of the second loop. So we go back to the beginning now, 3x into minus 18x goes minus 6 times. And if you notice, uh, all of these follow a certain pattern. It starts with an x squared, the next term is going to be an x term, and the next term is going to be a number, like a quadratic trinomial. So if you get x squared here and then an x squared here, you probably made a mistake somewhere. Now, once we have the minus 6 here, again we repeat the loop, so we're going to multiply the minus 6 by the plus 1. And we note that this gives us minus 6. So the very final thing we need to do is just check to see uh, what we need to add to minus 6 to get minus 6 here. And that clearly is 0. So once we get a 0 answer, that kind of tells us that we're on the right track. That the divisor here divides evenly into this expression here. Uh, so and we're left with an answer of x squared minus x minus 6. So I'm sure you can see there that this method of doing long division is quite a bit quicker than the conventional method of doing this. Now there is one kind of unusual question that you might end up getting in, in an exam. Uh, for example something like this one here where if you notice something is missing here, there's no x squared term. So this sometimes happens and what you need to do is replace the x squared with a dummy term. So put in, basically put in an extra x squared term here, 0 times x squared. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. So once I've done that it's pretty much the same as as before. So we got to first of all decide how big the grid is going to be. The highest power of x is 3. So there's going to be 3 columns and 2 rows because there's 2 terms in the divisor. So as usual we put the divisor here to the left of the grid and in this cell here we're going to put the very first term in the expression 4x cubed. So first thing we do is we divide the x into the 4x cubed to get 4x squared. Then we multiply the 4x squared by the minus 2 to get minus 8x squared. Now we ask ourselves, what do we need to add to minus 8x squared to bring it up to 0x squared? So that means we have to add plus 8x squared. And again, we commence the loop. We divide the x into the 8x squared to get plus 8x. And then we multiply the 8x by the minus 2 to get minus 16x. Again, we ask ourselves, what do we need to add to minus 16x to get minus 13x? Uh, we would need to add plus 3x. So back to the start, we divide the x into the 3x to get plus 3, which means the end of the loop. And then we, again, we multiply the 3 by the minus 2 to get minus 6 down here. So minus 6. And finally, we ask ourselves, what do we add to minus 6 to get minus 6? We add 0. So the 0 signifies that we have the right answer. Uh, we have a 0 remainder. That means that uh, the answer is 4x squared plus 8x plus 3.